In this video, trainers we're gonna look at, you must know these main things about your market. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to So Surprise Me When People Are Specialists in One Market, so specialist in Euro US Dollar, specialist in DAX, specialist in FTSE, specialist in Apple, whatever it is, but they don't know the nuances of the market. My opinion is these are some things that you must absolutely know to get the best opportunity of success in the market you're trading. Some are obvious, some are less obvious. So if you're just starting out in trading, maybe you think, okay, well, I want to start to trade this instrument, then go through these and decide to learn these so you know about your market. If you are currently trading a market and there's a gap in your knowledge, maybe it's worth going and just checking these things out because it can't harm, guys, it can't harm. And so you've seen in a minute how some of these are super useful for some setups. All right, so let's get into it. First thing is the daily range. I've talked about this before. Uh, this is the ATR. Uh, or you just a daily range ATR is not quite a daily range again talked about a video of that but knowing how much your market moves in a day especially if you're a day trader is super important it's the same if you're a swing trader and you've got a one month time frame how much does it normally move in a month because that will affect your price targets that will affect your entries that will affect your stops knowing the market normally moves x means you're unlikely to have your price target at 2x if it's intraday or 2x because it has to do something abnormal and if it does then what are the characteristics of that that it says it's abnormal so understanding their daily range and i've talked about this one quite a few times but i still see people kind of trading something that really isn't conducive to what they're trying to achieve number two intraday ranges so this uh what i've meant by intraday ranges is ranges based on the pattern that you trade the most so if you trade the opening hour what is the normal expected range for that hour do you know that if not you should do if you're trading the open or oh, 15 minutes what's the normal expected range hourly during each part of the day now if you're trading currencies there's actually some great resources out there uh, i don't know the urls but if you type in things like into google forex volatility a table or information or something like that you'll find resources where they mark down and say euro us dollar usd jpy gbp jpy whatever it may be by volatility based on hour of the day so you can see okay normally between you know 12 and 1 we have 30 pips worth of range normally between the whole day we have this so it does all the legwork for you and you can then again structure the trade around that so if you like trading over the uh, US open session, for example, that would be two o'clock till three o'clock UK times so opens at 2.30 and you want to trade the US, one of the USD pairs, you might say, well, actually, I know that the likely range is X, so I can frame my trade around that. So it's just understanding the daily range. The same like the closing ranges, maybe even overnight ranges if you're trading um, an index that trades trades overnight, or about a commodity if it's trading during the pit session when the options are open, all these kind of things. It's just understanding you know, everything about that, knowing them inside and out, the character uh, what they look like, what they like, what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy, you know, this kind of stuff. So, uh, intraday ranges, right? Number three, session characteristics. What I mean by session characteristics? So, session characteristics, I mean, is how this thing trades depending on the time or the day you're in. So in other words, you know, Monday may well be super volatile for the instrument you're in because there's something happens specifically on a Monday. Maybe Friday is a bit more volatile. Maybe it's Tuesday. Maybe it's the afternoon session. Having that understanding of when the volatility comes in or when the quiet periods are, maybe even split up in the day, the morning, the lunchtime, the evening. Maybe it's something like that and you understand, well, actually lunchtime is very quiet. I shouldn't be looking for breakout trades. Having that knowledge as well of knowing what's going on with each individual session characteristics, however you split that up, and if it's Forex, maybe it's Asian session, US session, European session. The engine or theme, this, this varies from um, kind of day to day, week to week. What's the theme that's running the market? What's the fuel for the market? Is it a trade war? Is it Brexit? Is it the price of gold? Is it interest rates? Is it this? Is it that? What's everyone looking at? Because knowing that means that you can monitor those bits of news flow and not be too wedded to news, but understanding ultimately you know, what's going to happen uh, if there's a good news on it or bad news in it and what people are thinking who've got the big money. Number five is price behavior. How the DAX behaves 
is very different to how the S&P 500 behaves. And for a lay person just looking at the chart, you wouldn't know why, but we know the reason why is because the order book is much thinner on the DAX on the futures contract than it is the S&P 500. Tick size, all this kind of stuff goes into it. And so you often see heavy wicks on the DAX intraday, S&P 500, not so much, maybe two or three pips through, ticks through, should I say, a support level, and then it goes on, whereas DAX might see a big flush. So there's very different, it's the same with crude oil against uh, you know, FTSE, for example, or some of the thick things like Euro stocks. So understanding the nuances, whether wicks are normal, whether they're not abnormal, and all these kind of things, the price characteristics and price behavior, again, understanding uh, the nuances of how it trades. And it's not necessarily intraday as well, guys, it's on a week basis or a month basis. And just seeing, well, actually, very often, we should kind of get very stretched and come back, and very often we're putting wicks in on the, on the weekly chart and so I shouldn't be too concerned or I should be concerned about the fact that we're, you know, we're pushing up and it's Wednesday because very often we reverse on Thursday or Friday, whatever it may be. Number six, correlated markets. This may not or may or may not apply to you, but for example, if you're trading European indices, you might look over and go, well, actually, US is very much driving at the moment, so I need to be careful and watch that. If I'm trading silver, is gold driving it? If I'm trading crude oil, is that driving the currency that I'm trading? Or is the currency that I'm trading being driven by the price of gold? Understanding those correlations and how um, solid they are at the moment. They may not be that solid at the moment, and it kind of goes in waves. Sometimes you have super correlations, like commodities are moving, Copper's moving, and then you're going to see the currency you're trading, the commodity currency you're trading, moving almost to the tick. Other times it goes and it's not even that relevant because something else is driving the other side of the currency pair. So understanding that as well. Number seven, pretty basic, the open and close. Even if you're not trading, um, I know it should be basic for most people trading stocks, like, okay, the open's here, the close is here. But for currency traders, you should know really the underlying equity markets open and close because that's going to influence how the currency pair trades. So if you're, paying GB, if you're trading GBP USD, you should know, hey, the FTSE opens at 8 a.m. in the morning, close at 4.30. Then we've got the Dow opening before that, 2.30, closing at 9 p.m. These are things that are going to influence that currency movement at those certain times, especially coming into the close or at the opening period. So knowing what the open and close is not necessarily, especially for Forex, obviously there's no specific open and close, but maybe what's the kind of mark to market that a lot of the interbank uses? What time is that? Is it 10.30 at night? Is it one o'clock in the morning? Knowing that, knowing these little markers and doing a bit of research, so you've got a little bit more knowledge than the next person. Because I almost guarantee the average Forex trader out there doesn't know when the underlying markets they're trading, the stock exchange is open. If they're trading the yen, do they know that there's a closing hour? Do they know there's two breaks in it? Do they know this? Do they know that? Do they know there's an auction period on the FTSE between uh, 4.30 and 4.45? Do they know these kind of things? No, they probably don't. So having that knowledge, that intimate knowledge about the market you're trading and about markets that are impacting the market you're trading will just help you. Because you can say, well, listen, I'll just hold it for this last little bit. I'll just be careful of this. Or it will just allow you to structure trades and not be caught out by stuff and use these things to your advantage. All right, guys, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.